Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Thursday, April 18, 2024. I pray that you are doing well today and may the God of heaven be with you and your family as you go throughout the day. Our reading today comes to us from Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 11. And it says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood, and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his wonderful word. And I pray that he will give us understanding and lead us by his Holy Spirit. Now here we see where Peter and John was heading to the temple to pray. It says that it was about 9 o'clock at the time. As they were about to enter, they met a man at the temple gate. And he was crippled from his birth, as the reading said. So he wasn't able to work or able to do anything for himself because of his state. And so they used to bring him to the temple gate where he would ask for help or for money and so while peter and john was passing him he he asked them for assistance but they did not have anything financial to give him they did not have any money and as the reading say that silver and gold peter said he have not or they have not but in the name of jesus of nazareth rise up and walk and they held him by the hand and took him up and he walked no the first thing we can identify here is that there is power in the name of Jesus. And I say, Amen. Because remember that this man was crippled from he was a baby. And now many years later, because of this miracle that was wrought in the name of Jesus, he is now able to walk. And he was so happy. He went into the temple, you know, praising God leaping for joy now the question i want to ask us today is does god still work miracles because i want us to understand that the god that was in peter's time is still the god that we serve in our time the scriptures say that god has not changed but there is something i want us to to understand about this god can work miracle and there is nothing impossible for God to do. He can turn water into wine. He can cause the sun to shine. He can hold back the winds of the storm. He can protect you from harm and from danger. He can heal you from any ailment that you have. This is the God that we serve, the God of power, the God who has all authority over everything in his bosom the god of creation the god of love and the god of the universe now 
while this is all good and important for us to understand that we serve a God of miracle, I do not want us to get carried away with the idea of miracle because today there seems to be a heavy focus on this miracle. And I want to advise you today that a lot of what you see is not guided by the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so we must be wise and we must be careful. And Christendom today and the world today is full of false teachers and imposters. Remember that the devil has power to work miracle too. And so be careful who you go to and saying that you're going for a miracle because you could be getting a miracle from the devil which eventually comes at a higher cost than you are willing to pay. So keep that in mind. But miracle is something that God does. But I just want you to be mindful of that fact. Satan works miracles too. And so... While we are in this position, while we are following in the footstep of God, because the Bible tells us that when one is sick, we must come together and pray, call the elders and call the members of the church and we pray for that person. Pray believing in the power of God to heal that person and that person believing in the power of God to heal them because it's a twofold thing. Both of you have to believe and then God, according to his wisdom, will grant that healing. Amen. So I hope we can understand that. And so we need to pray for the healing of man's soul. So it's much more than just physical healing that we are to focus on. We are called to be co-laborers with Christ and man, man is dying in sin every day. And so we need to pray for the miracle of rebirth, the revival of that soul to return to their maker, which is God. Because sin is a sickness. Amen? Do we understand that? And so if sin is a sickness, then we need to pray for the miracle of restoration. And so I pray that the Holy Spirit will really help us in all we are Approach the old idea of miracle knowing that God is able to restore but not allowing ourselves to be deceived by the fake miracles that the devil use a lot of time to draw people to him and if you go on YouTube and if you look out there in many nominal churches today this is a big part of their selling point Oh, they can heal you from this and they can heal you from that. And I tell you, most of it is a lie. And if you examine their process of how they claim to go about this healing, you can see that there is a great flaw and misleading that is in it. And so that is why we must allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Because God is not a God of confusion. And in truth and in fact, you can't give what you, you don't have. All power belongs to God. And if you and I are going to pray for the restoration, whether physically or spiritually, of a person, then that power has to come from God and God alone. And I say, Amen. So, may we depend on God for wisdom. May we depend on God for strength as we continue to look to him who is able to lead us. Amen.